Hello, everyone. I hope you're all doing well. I'm head researcher Simmons here at Apollo Engineering Site, updating you on our progress and field report on the introduction of the species Pteranodon into the containment zone on... Also, as we ramp up our operations, new facilities are being constructed to aid in our missions here, which we will brief you on as well. As for the current state of the ecosystem, it is stable. The populations have equalized across all species, and the introduction of our latest specimens will result in some disruption, as our previous editions have done. We do, however, expect the Dinosuchus and Pteranodon to find a balance just as the Stegosaurus and Carnotaurus have before it. The Pteranodon will enter the ecosystem with no direct competitors, and until we introduce a species to compete, will explode in population and become a serious security risk. Species Description Pteranodon is a genus of pterosaur that lived during the late Cretaceous geological period of North America between 89.8 million years ago to 70.6 million years ago. Its name means toothless wing, due to the lack of teeth in its beak-like mouth. Adult male Pteranodon were among the largest pterosaurs, weighing at least 44 pounds or 20 kilograms, and the wingspan of these adult males reached up to 18 feet or 5.6 meters, whereas adult females were much smaller, averaging in at 3.8 meters or 12 feet in wingspan. With their long head crest, the Pteranodon's head measured 1.8 meters or 6 feet in length for the males. Sexual dimorphism is present in the Terra as the females are notably smaller, and this also accounts for their signature head crest, which is much less pronounced in these specimens. Field Report once again, I want to recognize the personnel who put their lives in danger to gather this incredibly valuable data for our research, and also the tireless work of our teams in genetics has allowed these marvelous creatures to be resurrected. The survival rate of our test subjects exceeded our wildest expectations at an astounding 61% survival rate. Our field team focused their studies on several individuals, primarily males number 8, 13, and 22, and females observed were numbers number 3 and 11. Once released, the pteranodons immediately sought out roosting locations for them to rear young. However, these specimens are not yet capable of reproduction as to control their population during the testing phase. The pteranodon's diet is that of a piscivore, or fish eater as we had suspected. One interesting confirmation we can make from our observations is they take fish by dipping their beaks into the water while in low soaring flight. They are also capable of swimming and taking off from the water. Field observations have witnessed male number 8 engaging in dipping behavior as well as plunge diving like many modern seabirds. Pteranodons are very active creatures. They spend most mornings skimming for food and pestering other carnivores to steal an easy meal. Fighting each other and picking on other dinosaurs was found to be a daily occurrence for both males number 13 and 22, seeming to have formed something akin to a gang. It really makes you wonder about the consciousness of these creatures. It remains to be seen whether this behavior is a result of territorial disputes or it's simply fun for males number 13 and 22. The test population of Terras released into the containment zone have been testing our security measures and our staff is beginning to fear a containment breach may be inevitable. It is doubtful that the Pteranodon will complete directly with other species on the island. However, our teams will be on the lookout for any disruptions to the ecosystem as a result of these tests before we begin full integration of the Pteranodon population into the containment zone. Incident Report Testing operations resulted in specimens of Pteranodon breaking containment from transport when one of the container doors were left unlocked. The incident resulted in the death of J and the injury of several personnel. While these losses were acceptable, 
All 12 specimens were a total loss. Impossible to recover at this point. Site personnel in progress of transporting assets to designated release sites were attacked when the containment breach occurred. After all surviving personnel reached shelter, the pteranodons seemed to be drawn to the communications array within the containment zone. Evacuation efforts began immediately, however it was noted one pteranodon remained at the garages at the time of extraction. It was observed by the remote camera feeds until it took notice of the movement of the cameras and destroyed them. Site equipment, including my computer, were able to record some of the events. Playing log now. Yes, yes, what is it? I'm very busy. Oh my god. I'm on my way. We got lucky this time, but at best, we need to do a serious review of handling procedures, and I fear at worst, something far more sinister may be happening here. Perhaps some group is sabotaging our research on this island. Containment Zone Facilities The construction on facilities has begun in earnest. This infrastructure facilitates the operations within the containment zone. These facilities are to be staffed continuously with each shift lasting one month. Monthly supply runs will be scheduled to facilitate the shift change as well as keep the outpost stocked with necessary resources. Containment zone facilities are to be delivered no less than 10 50 gallon barrels of fuel each month to ensure refueling of field vehicles on site. These facilities and more will be coming online to support the containment of specimens which is paramount to our continued operations on this island. Despite all the challenges, three facilities have been completed. 1. The Communications Array The completion of the radio tower has vastly improved our ability to coordinate across the island. This facility was no easy feat to construct. It sits atop one of the highest peaks for maximum effectiveness. Heavy metal fencing protects the tower itself as well as a concrete building on site. Second, we have the garages. The garages are the standard forward operating base for the majority of expeditions into the containment zone. It is here we use on-site facilities to coordinate and prepare to accomplish our goals on the ground. The entire complex is surrounded by heavy metal fencing with a reinforced concrete building for protection and two large garages for expedition vehicles. Additionally, the small bunker, which has proven most useful for sustaining our field observations and sample collection. The fortified fencing and reinforced concrete bunker can withstand anything short of a Tomahawk missile. Final Conclusions The Pteranodon presents a whole new containment breach risk, and drastic measures will be required to ensure the effectiveness of our containment protocols. Our team recommends all animals receive subdermal implants in conjunction with the construction of a full containment wall. These implants will deter the specimens from approaching the wall by causing the animals to experience hallucinations and feel compelled to stay away. A more secure containment on this island is absolutely necessary as we continue development on our next round of species for introduction. As these creatures become more powerful, even these measures may prove ineffective. 
That will conclude our species profile and field report from the containment zone. Pending board approval, we will begin the introduction of new species onto the island once the containment wall is completed. Thank you all so much for taking the time to hear our report. Our thanks to the board for all their generous support in these scientific endeavors. Please give us your feedback, comments, and if you like these reports, be sure to subscribe for more. Thank you all again for watching. If you indeed still are, good day.